It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. So folks, the title of today's show is called Designing Healthcare for the Future. And man, it's gonna be a great show for you today because we're gonna learn about all the great things that are happening uh, here in Hazleton and Lehigh Valley uh, Health a network and we have the main people here folks we're getting it right from the horse's mouth as they say John Fletcher a good friend of mine is president of the Lehigh Valley uh, Hospital here in Hazelton and my good friend Dr. Anthony Valent Tony Valent senior medical uh, director you know I, I'm excited about today's show okay it's thanks for coming on Joe I know you uh, John you're busy uh, but there's so many things happening okay uh, from going back, let's go back to day one, okay? okay. What, what, you know, when, what your thoughts were and visions were you know, uh, for the merger. Uh, so what was our, our, our main goal there? So, so if, you, uh, if you remember, we merged on January 1 of 2014. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we, we didn't merge out of necessity. We thought it was basically a relationship we had with Lehigh Valley Network for so, so many years. Um, so I always say it was an engagement that, that led to a marriage. Uh, we, we knew each other, <clears throat> we understood each other, uh, and so we had a chance to truly date for, I bet you, Tony, four, five, six years uh, yes. that, uh, that we were working with the network. And as the consolidation of hospitals occurred in northeastern Pennsylvania, we thought it was time uh, for us to pick a partner, uh, and uh, we picked Lehigh Valley Health Network. Um, part of that process, as it was announced on uh, January 1st, is that we were going to build a replacement facility um, in the Hazleton within our primary service area. Uh, and so, um, I don't know if you want me to get into our thought process as it relates to the new acute care facility and, and where we are yet, but, but that was, uh, we have been uh, on, a, on a journey to, to really truly determine um, what is in the best interest of the Hazleton community. So uh, as you assess the years, okay, mm -hmm. from 2014 <clears throat> to the present, and, we'll, and we're certainly going to talk about the exciting things that are happening. <clears throat> Have you seen, um, you know, I've seen it from having all the doctors on the show and, and people from the health net, Lehigh Valley Health Network, um, you, have you seen the progress in health care and facilities, technology, and the whole, the whole nine yards, John? So we have, we have grown. I mean, uh, if you remember, we, uh, we did not have cancer services. Uh, Lehigh Valley uh, Hospital Hazleton did not have that service line. Uh, and we opened that service line within the first year uh, of, our, of our merger. Uh, we expanded into Mountaintop. Uh, we opened a location in Center City. Uh, we opened another location in the Cunningham Valley. Uh, we've added several uh, general surgeons. Uh, we've added uh, oncologist, uh, we've added hospitalist, uh, we've added, uh, if you recall, we, we moved uh, uh, our radiology services over to uh, the network uh, radiology services and added uh, radiologists to our team. And I'm, I'm sure I'm missing a few, Tony, I don't know if you have any. Interventional, had, interventional, interventional radiology. Interventional uh, with Dr. Bronstein, who. Just had him who, on, it was, it was a good show. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so we have grown tremendously and expanded our services uh, that we offer. So here we are today, mm -hmm. okay? So we're, we're looking at, um, uh, you know, um, uh, expansion. We're looking at renovation, okay? Let's talk about that, what's the, the exciting things happening. Because everyone in the area, as Tony and I were discussing, uh, we didn't want to see another St. Joe's, an empty building here in Hazleton. Certainly the hospital has a great impact on the entire, you know, community, but especially for Hazleton. So what was, the, what was the decision, final decision point, John, where you decided, okay, fine, we're staying here in Hazleton, and what we're going to do? Yeah, so, so it really was, uh, w w when we announced that we were going to build a replacement hospital in January, it started a process. And we engaged a consulting firm, uh, I believe out of Chicago, Kaufman Hall. And we really did a, a deep dive into what a hospital of the future should look like. And uh, we spent, uh, Tony was part of that process, uh, we spent uh, a good year in taking a look at what that would be, not size of the facility, number of beds, the location of the facility. And as we continued to move down, uh, down the path of, of the replacement facility, um, Tony and I had a conversation uh, probably about six or nine months ago. I walked into Tony's office and I said, something, this doesn't feel right. Uh, because, uh, and I'll let Tony talk a little bit about uh, healthcare of the future, but we saw that our inpatient market share, uh, we had a good, a good percentage of the inpatient share. 
and, and where we were losing market share is on the outpatient side. And, and healthcare is moving to uh, outpatient ambulatory, um, at not the inpatient side. Uh, Tony's experienced it over the years with uh, the number of admissions. Uh, what you're able to treat on an inpatient uh, today is far different. Uh, most of that's moving to the outpatient side. And, um, and so we, we, we truly looked and said, I think we need to shift in the no. best interest of the community of Hazleton from an inpatient strategy to an outpatient, to an outpatient so, strategy. So when you said something doesn't look right, okay, was this <clears throat> during this uh, marketing survey that they were doing, was, were you getting reports in what you decided that like, things weren't looking the way they should be? Well, I would say that when you start to collect the data, <clears throat> you yeah. start to look at where we are from a market share standpoint, and then you also take a look at where healthcare is going, mm -hmm. uh, it, it kind of it was a rather easy decision. You're going down a path where healthcare is moving to outpatient. Uh, we have a strong facility in the, in the city. Uh, we really need to expand and grow our outpatient. Uh, and so even though the merger document states that we will, we will build a replacement facility, we did not think that it was in the best interest of the Hazleton community. Yes. And um, okay. um, so, Tony, what input did you have then? With, with well, I mean, I, exactly what John said. I mean, you, what you didn't want to do is just build a hospital for the sake of building a hospital because a document said you're going to build a hospital. When we really looked at what we had and where we were going, it made much more sense to get those dollars and put them uh, and spend them more uh, wisely, if you will. Uh, to, to services where we felt we really needed to ramp up. Uh, and also, uh, we felt that we would have uh, maintain our presence within the city with the, with the present uh, uh, facility that we have, which I think we're going to talk about yes. at some juncture as well. But it, it just didn't seem right just to you know, uh, build a hospital for the sake of building a hospital when we realized that the, those dollars could be better spent with a more focused approach. Okay, so now we're keeping the hospital. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about what's happening now. What about the renovations? What, what are we going to, what will we, we be looking for uh, in the hospital, the current hospital we have right now? So, so we're going to modernize the facility. Uh, and so uh, it, it's, uh, we're going to make a significant investment into, uh, into the inpatient uh, uh, facility. Uh, we are going to move to private rooms. Um, but we're going to have the flexibility uh, that if our census demands it, that we may have to at some point in time during the, during the year move to some semi-private, but we think that we'll be able to handle private rooms probably 85, 90% of the time. So that's important. Um, and that's then, important. Uh, and I'll let Tony talk about uh, one, of the, one of the concerns that we have, and I think an opportunity for us to improve, is uh, uh, the emergency department. <clears throat> we, we, uh, our wait times are not where we want them to be. Um, and so I think uh, one of the primary reasons uh, for, for that is, you know, our volumes. It's just the number of people that are, are seeking emergency services in our current facility. Um, it's just difficult to move our patients through. And so we want, to, we, we want to make sure that we invest wisely in expanding the ED. I don't know, Tony, if you want to talk a little bit yeah, about that. Yeah, expand on that a little bit for me, Tom. Yeah, I, I think, Sam, what, what John's referring to is, is we, 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 want to, we, we, we hear what the public is saying about our emergency department. And to some degree, they're, they're absolutely right. The wait times are not where we want them to be. And, and we view that as an opportunity for us to really ramp up the level of service that we can offer. But to do that, we have to modernize the ED and expand the ED. Uh, we want to have a, a fast track in the ED, an accelerated track in the ED, where people that are not very seriously ill but are still seeking services can get in and out in a timely manner, which will facilitate them moving through quickly, but will also free up providers to really deal with the people that are more acutely ill and do require longer services and longer stays in the ED. So. Uh, we, we're looking at it from the standpoint of modernizing and expanding the ED as helping both of those types of triaged patients. Mm -hmm. The sicker ones as well as the ones that are coming in for more routine care, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, but under the present set of circumstances, it's very difficult to do with the facility that we now have. So that was one of the reasons we thought going with this plan would be a better plan was because it gives us the ability to really uh, sit back and really develop the emergency department that we want to have and that we think will make a big improvement with people's perceptions of emergency care in Hazleton. Has this process begin, uh, started already? 
The planning process is, is just getting going right now. We, now that we know which direction we want to go in, uh, we're currently going through the early phases of the planning process as to what some of these facilities will look like. As John mentioned, uh, the facility here, uh, we, we, we know we're going to be expanding the emergency department. We know we're going to be basically giving the whole place uh, a general facelift, switching the facility around to mostly private rooms with the ability to flex based on uh, census needs. Uh, people love private rooms. Doctors yeah. love private rooms. Private rooms have been shown to uh, actually allow the patient to really tell you more yes. of what's going on yes. with them because they don't have to worry about somebody listening. Yes. So you get a better, real better feel for what's going on with the patient. It's just a better way of practicing medicine. Um, and that's really the direction where we want to go. Okay. I, I think the other issue is that we, we are really going to leverage technology with the new facility. And, and uh, it is uh, telemedicine is critical. Yes. To, to both access to, to care in Hazleton and our ability to connect to uh, physician specialties that we don't offer here. Uh, and so it, uh, we're going to have a, a major investment in making sure those, those capabilities are, are current. Uh, and I think uh, that's an exciting. Yeah. I, I think that's the telemedicine. I mean, I already see you have it in Mountaintop, okay? Um, yeah. And, um, uh, but you're doing that to a degree right now. We do it right. now, so yeah. yes. We, 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 do it in, in, we do it in a couple of different uh, service lines, and we're, that's one thing we're, we're really actively working on right now is, is going full, full steam ahead with, with uh, expanding our service lines and our specialties that we're doing telemedicine in. You know, um, every time we have doctors that are talking about different uh, modalities or whatever, um, what I say is that, you know, the fact that you have access to this entire big network, okay, you, you, they say, you know, as when you were practicing, well, I want a second opinion. And well, well, here we're getting second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. I mean, you have access to, uh, you know, like, for example, cancer, now you, uh, aff your affiliation with Sloan Kenneric, okay, you have Lehigh Valley, I mean, you have all these great doctors, okay, who are experienced, we have access to them. Am I correct in saying that, John? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, and, and, and we, we, you know, it, it is so nice to be part of such a large yes. family. Yeah. And so I think that was a true benefit of, of, of the, uh, the affiliation or merger arrangement is it opened so many doors. Yeah. And technology has made it especially convenient for the patient. Because now the patient doesn't have to travel anymore. Yeah. But, you know, th now we can use technology to bring that right into the room with the patient. You know, the world's gotten smaller, yeah. you know, because of technology. <laughs> and, so it becomes and, very convenient. Uh, in addition, having that helicopter. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it really makes it nice. Should we need to get them to the network, having that helicopter based in Hazleton, uh, I, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know if people realize the benefit that is to the community to have that access. In your marketing survey, was there anything um, that came? Because you know, many years ago, and I've been, I mean, since 1994, I've been pushing local doctors and local healthcare because I think, you know, I think we just were blessed to have all the facilities. Okay. Um, but the, the, the same thing about um, um, people that are leaving the area for health care, are percentages decreasing, uh, you know, people now staying here and taking advantage of the great health care we have, or are there certain people still thinking, well, I got to go to Philadelphia, I got to New York, I got to go to Canada, whatever. Was there any? Yeah, so we did, we did study that. And, and so what we found is that since the merger, we have decreased that out migration. Okay. But, but to be quite honest with you, there's still opportunity. Yeah. Uh, we still have the ability yeah. to, to, uh, to, to uh, increase the business here in Hazleton by decreasing that out migration. And, and truly, we think uh, this new strategy or the vision that we're taking with the focus on the inventory is going to help us do that. Uh, it, it's uh, critical uh, because many people are out migrating for outpatient services. People think it's, oh, it's just when I'm really sick, I'm going to out migrate. But we, we think. Uh, if we have the, uh, the right quality physicians and the right number of physicians and the right facilities to provide the service, we can, we can stop that or reduce that out migration piece. Folks, I'm talking about John Fletcher, who is the president of the Lehigh Valley uh, Hospital here at, uh, in Hazleton, and uh, Dr. Tony Valent, who is the senior medical director. He mentioned something about recruitment. How do you get these good doctors that we have and, and good medical facilities and, and staying on top of that? We'll discuss that when we come back after the break. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us, folks. I'm Sam Lasant. You're watching The Sam Lasant Show. And folks, I got good news for you. You know, we all have one of these. Well, guess what? You can watch all of our programs now on our own app. So wherever you're going, if you miss a show, just go to our 
our, our website and we'll give you the information how to download the app and you'll be able to watch every one of our programming, including our news, on your smartphones. My guest today, John Fletcher, who is the president of the Lehigh Valley Hospital here in Hazleton, and Dr. Valent, who is the senior medical director uh, at Lehigh Valley Hospital. Uh, we talked about, you know, recruitment. We're talking about uh, two areas. Let's talk about Center City, mm -hmm. and let's talk about the Wellness Center. What's exactly. happening in those areas? So, so the, the approach we're taking, in addition to the modernization of the hospital, uh, we want to expand our services in Center City, where we currently offer pediatrics and express care. Uh, so we want to grow that. Uh, we want to add uh, both primary care, family medicine, internal medicine, as well as add uh, OBGYN services to that location. Uh, and uh, so we will start that process. We're, we're programming uh, what, what services we're going to offer there. But that's what we're looking, so we'll see an expansion in that. Yeah. Right now, City. currently, mm -hmm. at Center City, what right. are you doing right now? Express care? Yes. And uh, pediatrics. Okay. So now, some people deciding when they have to go to the emergency room, okay? Right. What are the decisions here? I mean, because you have facilities here at Center City, mm -hmm. you're able to treat. So where do you say, well, we could go here or go up to the, the hospital? What, are, what areas? Tony. Well, it, you know, it gets a little neb nebulous. Uh, yeah. Sam, to be honest with you, because there's really not a, you know, there's, it, it's, it's a lot of gray areas. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, I mean, it's very, fairly straightforward if, if you have a sore throat or a sprain or a strain or something like that, that obviously would be something we would want them to go to express care for. But where it gets a little dicey is um, uh, when people have something that they think may be a little bit more serious, um, a cough, a shortness <coughs> of breath, something like that. And, and that's where I think a lot of them uh, err on the side of safety and they go up to the, uh, to the ED. Uh, even though a lot of that stuff even could probably still be taken care of at Express Care. Um, you know, people like to think that the ED is a, it's a safer place, that there's more services yeah. available there, that they just feel safer. If, if it is something serious, they're right there. So, you know, it's still left up to the patient to decide where to go. We try to do as much education as we can. Uh, so that for the more, uh, it's kind of the things that you would typically go to your family doctor's office for, maybe you can't get an appointment with him in a, in a hurry and you need to be checked for something like that. That's, that, there are items that we would like them to go to, uh, to express care for. But, but again, you know, there's a lot of gray areas and, and, and in those gray areas, people will almost always err on the side of caution and, and go to the bigger facility. Yeah. The Wellness Center, mm -hmm. John. So the Wellness Center, as you know, we, uh, the Wellness Center is, I think, celebrating its 10th uh, anniversary already, already. Uh, so it's it. hard to believe that it's been open for that long and you know really that is that is uh, boy it's a destination point for outpatient services and I think people have the uh, a, a great patient experience when they go there and, and so when, when we were looking at our strategy moving forward we thought let's take that wellness health and wellness center concept and expand on it uh, I think what people are looking for in healthcare is uh, that one central location where they can receive a majority of their services rather than hopping around to different locations. And so at the Health and Wellness Center, we want to we want to expand our services there. And so I don't mean necessarily expanding the building, but I mean actually building additional uh, facilities on that site. Uh, and so what we want to offer on that site is uh, we want to consolidate and expand our surgical services. So you'll see our surgeons located at the Health and Wellness Center location. We want to expand our medical specialties in cardiology and endocrinology and neurology, and I know I'm missing some. Uh, we want to add primary care, family medicine, internal medicine. Uh, we want to expand and grow our women's and children's center, uh, services. And so we want to add OB uh, and, uh, and our GYN services, as well as pediatrics. Uh, we think it's important to have an express care location to take care of the population on that side uh, near, near the health and wellness center. And, and we also want to take a look at what other services um, that are unique uh, that we should be offering that are kind of out of the traditional thought process of, of, of healthcare, but connected. Um, healthcare is changing. Uh, it, it's it's uh, incredible. Yeah. And so we, we are just starting that journey about what are some of the innovations that we could utilize. We want to really expand our telemedicine capabilities at the Health and Wellness Center. We need more space for community meetings. Uh, we talked about uh, different ideas um, that, that we think are, are with, um, where healthcare is going. And it's, it really is becoming more of a retail type concept. You know, Tony touched on something about education, okay? And, and I find um, that it's amazing. When I have different, when Tammy brings these different guests on, okay? 
uh, I, I get the response. I didn't know they had. I didn't know that they have this. You know, particularly, and it's interesting because then your doctors and people uh, are out there giving seminars all yeah. the time, educating people that it's so. It, it's um, it's very informative as to you know what's going on in the area and getting a good feel for that. Getting good doctors to come here, okay, or recruiting. How, how do you do that? I mean, that's that's a, a challenge, isn't it? You're smiling. It's, it's, it's a bit of an art. <laughs> it's a bit of an art. It, it, you know, Sam, it's no secret. Uh, you know, northeastern Pennsylvania has lagged behind its ability to recruit docs because of what we have to offer here compared to the more metropolitan areas, yep. the bigger cities, yeah, yeah. and even some areas just Allentown, which is not a huge metropolitan area, but still, you know, much bigger than, than we have here. So there is a little, we are at a little bit of a, uh, uh, an area where we, we, we're not on the same playing field as some of those, and a lot of guys coming out of training are looking more for that metropolitan area, the bigger group type areas. But we think with some of the ideas that we have, and especially with our affiliation with the network, we can leverage uh, our affiliation with the network and with the services that they supply there and with the amount of docs that they have in their service lines there and their specialty areas there, that we can use that to leverage and, and bring on docs coming out of training that are looking for maybe not necessarily a real metropolitan area but a, a, a very successful area to practice medicine where you still have an affiliation with a major medical center and that that uh, that's something that is attractive to a lot of a lot of folks and I'll tell you you have some great you have Eagle Rock you have Sand Springs I mean there's fabulous places, nice places and live. you know my wife and I we, we live at 8 o'clock in the morning 9 o'clock we're in New York City at 11 o'clock I mean we're in Philadelphia I mean so uh, and then when they come here, they love it. Do, do you find that, John? When you're I, I will tell you, they, you know what they love? They love the people. Yes. And, and, and so when, even when you talk to the people from the Allentown area, they really enjoy how, how, uh, how, how nice the people are. And, and, uh, and, and truly, that, that makes a difference. And you're right. We have a lot to offer oh, in northeastern yes. Pennsylvania. And I think everything that Tony said, plus the new facilities that we're going to build, uh, to show that we are a state-of-the-art facility in, in healthcare, you're going to get that combined with our network relationship, our close proximity to New York City and Philadelphia. Uh, and you know what? You, you, you know this. It's nice to have New York and Philadelphia so close, but you really, you really don't need to leave the area. Yeah. I mean, we have, you know, Montage Mountain. Uh, we have ski resorts. We have outdoor activities. Yeah. And what we're looking for, ideally, is a person who has some family connection in the Northeast um, and is uh, uh, understands the type of community they're looking for, but want access to uh, to the cities. Yeah, I talked to some doctors who you moved in here and, and if, whether they're a, the areas here and they just love the love the, like the people, mm -hmm. like you said, and, and so they have the big cities when want them, but they come here when in, in, in different areas. Uh, anything we missed that what's happening that people should know about in, in healthcare so far? Do we miss anything? Well, I, I would just like to add that uh, we are. I mean, it's a very exciting time, and oh. I think it's extremely exciting. For us, that I think the Hazelton community is going to see, um, uh, we're going to redefine healthcare as it's provided. Mm -hmm. uh, and as Tom Kennedy said, we're not building the hospital of the future; we're building the healthcare for the future. Mm -hmm. And and I think he kind of uh, hit it head on. Mm -hmm. uh, and and really, that's that's what we're trying to do in Hazelton. And Tony, you know, being a, a native of this area, you you know, practice and physician, you know, you've seen so much happen. Mm -hmm. We talked about this last show, you know. So many things happened that are exciting in healthcare. Yeah, absolutely. When I when I think back, I came back to town in 1991 to practice, and when I, I think uh, the emergency room in 1991 had eight bays yeah. and uh, just curtains in front of the bays, yeah. and yeah. Uh, it, it's really it's really uh, it, it's been rewarding to see what's happened here, the transformation, and I think the next couple of years are going to really really be exciting mm -hmm. as we get into the new facility. Mm -hmm facilities and we see where we can take this and especially with our affiliation with with Lehigh Valley now there's there's just so much upside potential and I, I think there's a lot more education here where people understand about the Lehigh the network when we say the network the network is critical because mm -hmm. you are in you know telemedicine you are in contact with a lot of great doctors a lot of people who've been in you know who had whatever surgeries or whatever so we have this network <clears throat> so we have the um, 
Second opinion, third opinion, fourth opinion, you name the opinions, it's, it's interesting. John, it's always nice for you to come on and Tony Thank to talk you. about you, what's sir. happening. We're all excited here. Uh, I've been from, you know, your doctors, your healthcare, your nurses, your LPNs, your receptionists, everyone in healthcare, I, I, God bless them because they're all underpaid, you, you know, as you know, because you just, they, they have to have a compassion for that, and they do. We see that in Hazleton. Every I, I, single day. Yeah, you, 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 you get involved in a hospital. You go around and talk to different people. It's, uh, it's interesting. Those nurses sometimes, God bless them. You know, it really is something. But, uh, Tony, always nice seeing you. Thank okay, you, John. Nice, nice seeing you. Here. Folks, you. Uh, I could say designing the health care uh, for Hazleton in the future, it's here now. And I keep telling you that bar gives, I don't know how far we can raise this bar. It just keeps going up and up. Uh, if you want any more information, uh, the number is 570-501-4LVH. We'll see you next time. <coughs>